Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to the 10 Minute Morning. Today, we are so honored to have a special guest. Super curler Amber Holland is with us this morning. Welcome, Amber. How are you? Good morning. I'm fine. That's great. We appreciate you taking some time to come along. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about where you're from? Or what you, you know, kind of a little bit? Sure. Uh, yeah, so presently living in Lower Burn, Saskatchewan, uh, on the farm with my partner, Travis Brown. <laughs> I uh, actually grew up on a farm at Dilk, Saskatchewan, with my family. Uh, we had grain and cattle. I went to school in Bethune and then Lumsden for high school. And then, uh, yeah, I was in, uh, in Saskatoon for a few years for post-secondary and then Regina for 20 years before I moved out here to Lower Burn. Awesome. Can you I'm apologize because curling is not always the most information super center that it is. Can you list <laughs> off all your accomplishments, off all your compliments, accomplishments, if we have time? Uh, well, I can I'll list off some, but I've been curling for a lot of years. So i um, been playing for 37 years. So I don't know if we'll have time to list off every accomplishment, but probably the major ones is uh, 1992 as Canadian junior champion. I uh, went to the World Juniors in 1993, uh, silver medal there. Um, most major accomplishment would obviously be winning the National Scotties Women's Championship in 2011, uh, going to the Worlds, winning silver medal there. Uh, I've been to probably, uh, I'm trying to think, well, I've actually been to of the last five Olympic trials. I've been to four of them, either as a player or as a fifth player um won the nationals I get or won the provincials for the women's in 2010 as well before we went in 2011 and won um provincial mixed champion high school champion way back when I don't know lots of other things in between but too now many games just, too many things now you're just bragging <laughs> yeah <laughs> you're better than me because if I had all that everybody would know all the time because I'd be wearing rings <laughs> and it all off for me Oh, that's awesome. That, that's great. Uh, who got you into curling? My dad. Yeah, my family. Uh, both my dad and my grandpa curled uh, growing up. So when uh, when we grew up on the farm, we were a sport family. We did lots of sports within either school or or other things. And dad always had us either at the curling rink or the skating rink or something. So um, I have two older sisters. So we had a perfect uh, five person team with mom and dad and us three because usually someone was either studying for school or had something else on the go so we just had a family team that we curled and we uh, played at the Bethune Curling Club. Awesome. Uh, who's been your biggest influence in curling? Probably still my dad you know that that person that get, got you started. Um, other influences I would say is, would be my coaches that uh, have helped me along the way um Murph Onger was my coach in juniors and then again coached me in women's when we won the Canadian championship uh so he's been a huge influence and then uh Jim Orr who uh he was from Saskatoon coached me for a number of years I think those people were probably one of my biggest influences from um staying competitive in the sport and and just becoming a better player yeah probably hard on dad when somebody else had to start coaching eh Oh yeah. No, I fired, I fired dad at age 16. It, it was, it was quite amicable. I told mom that I didn't want dad coaching me. And from that point, he never really did. He was always the one in the background. Oh, <laughs> and don't I worry. Mean, he knows this. He, he knows this story. It's all good, but I he's the one in the background. When you sit down, you have a drink and you just talk about the game, but the coaching part, that was a little, oh, yeah. I'm still living it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's been your favorite shot? Oh, favorite shot. Um, probably, probably my last shot 
in the last end in at the Canadian Championship in 2011, um, where I had to draw around the guard, force Jennifer Jones to to make and or miss her shot uh, that she ended up missing for us to win the Canadian Championship. So, uh, yeah, I think that was probably my most favorite shot because there is pressure with that and having to do it and execute on it. You know, it's it's gratifying at the end. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, do you have a shot you'd like to take back or get a do over on? <laughs> Lots of them. <laughs> <laughs> Probably more of those than favorite ones. Um, the one that comes to mind, probably that keeps me up at night mostly was our 2011 world championship uh, in the final. Uh, we're playing Sweden. Um, we tight game kind of back and forth, but in the seventh end, lots of rocks in play. And if I make a hit and roll, uh, I pretty much have her in jail. Um, I don't even know if she, she probably can't even score and we're stealing and kind of taking advantage of the game and I nose hit and end up giving her a shot for two. So you were, yeah. you were, uh, however long a curling she did, you, you missed by that. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> How do you, how do you settle, how do you settle your nerves before a big shot? Um, cause this weekend no, you look, I was watching and you look calmer than I did. Cause I was screaming. <laughs> at times. Yeah. It's called years of practice. I actually haven't really had a ton of nerves pre-shot. Um, once I get playing, um, it's usually like, if I have nerves, it's kind of that getting out there, getting on the ice. But once I'm on the ice and in the groove, I really, I don't really have nerves. I probably, I think the heart rate does go up. I think I probably get a bit more amped. I, if you watch me, I need to be much more of a calm, cool. I don't have a whole lot of high, highs and lows. Um, so yeah, I probably just, I just do deep breathing, um, trying to keep, keep my heart rate down, keep kind of things the same, very low level. I don't know. That's Absolutely. Once you're in the game, you're in the game, right? You're playing, yeah. right? So it's usually before and after. Which has been your favorite title to win so far? 2011 Canadian champion, for sure. Oh, yeah. That one obviously yeah. stands out. Um, yeah, like I would probably pick like world silver medalist, but those don't, it just doesn't roll off the tongue the same. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> probably, you know, it, it's, it's mind-blowing when when you just say oh i'm a world silver medalist and you have that oh, silver I'm, I'm silver you're second in the world could you imagine you're second in the world in anything right like yeah like you it's just the it's the, the hard it's a hard one because it's the game you lost so i'll always pick the one the game i won <laughs> absolutely absolutely yeah. uh who's your favorite team to play against um i don't know if i have a favorite team um um, probably any team where, um, where you can just, you can just be loose, um, where you can just enjoy playing against them. Um, I, I think just any of those teams where you have good camaraderie on and off the ice, they're probably my favorite. And so there's multiples of those. I don't, I can't even handfuls of That's a very politician answer. Thank you. I know, but I don't really... <laughs> Way back when, and see, people wouldn't even know, well, some might if they follow curling, but uh, probably back in the early 2000s, it would have been Heather Rankin, um, it used to be Heather Fowley. She, we played her numerous times at Olympic trials and stuff. And she, she was just a great, a great ambassador for curling, great shot maker. And we just always had a blast when you're on the ice. Awesome. Who's your least favorite to play against? We got to ask that. <laughs> um, so to maybe less political you know what, to, to be honest, a, a lot of the, the Asian curling teams are probably my least favorite. Um, more for the fact when you play teams from China or Korea or Japan, you don't know what's going on. You don't know what they're saying, <laughs> um, which so, so it's a different feel and a different flow. And uh, if anybody's watched curling, their energy level is just up here. Um, so from me as a perspective of being a bit more energy level down here playing them is really tough um so that's that's just my absolutely so any of those teams that i struggle makes total sense to me yeah so what's next on the agenda 
Next on the agenda. Well, for my team, not a whole lot. Uh, provincials were obviously just finished up and it was an early year for provincials because it's an Olympic year. So those Olympic years, they try to get the Canadian women's championship done as early as possible for TV because we want to watch that on TV. Plus then in the middle of February, we get to watch the Olympics. Um, so yeah, so really there's not much more to play in with my, my own team. Uh, we may do a couple spiels later in March if something pops up, but, uh, pretty much a, a quick end to the season, I guess. Um, but I am going to be still throwing some rocks here in the next little bit. Uh, Penny Barker's team that just won the province asked me to be fifth player. So I'm heading to the Scotties in, in Thunder Bay with them in, a few weeks I guess so we'll be doing that and I might play some mixed curling too our provincials is in March for that so I might I might throw my hot name in the ring with that with a few other people perfect perfect wow and congratulations so you get to go to another Scotties I get to go to another Scotties yeah I've been been alternate player now I think this is the fifth time I've been alternate player um at a national a national event either Scotties or Canada Cup so um oh, actually a couple more with trials so probably seven so I don't know it's it's a different role but it's I enjoy it I'm a good curling watcher I don't get too stressed out watching curling either so uh, I'm probably a good pick but there's got to be a lot of credit in that too that you can take a lot of pride in because they're not picking somebody they don't want to be around for a week <laughs> well you would think so you'd hope so you it know is, what I mean like Wayne a... Gretzky talks about his dad wanted him to be a nice guy and so obviously you're somewhat pulling that off because there's no way if everybody hated you, they'd be asking. So congratulations. I, I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to think I bring something else too, but yes, it's um, I think when you look at picking an alternate player and we've been there that you don't want someone who's going to rock the boat. You don't want, you don't want a personality in there that's going to mess up what the team has. Cause obviously the team's figured it out. They know what to do and they've just won a provincial championship. So you don't want someone in there that's going to come in and try to change things or make it different. Um, you know, so I, I think I recognize that and obviously the team does too. So I'll just go in and help with what I can and get out of their way when you know when to get out of their way. Yes. Too bad Barker wasn't out of the way by that much in the 11. <laughs> Are there any things you'd still like to accomplish? Oh, um, I think, I think with the team that we have now, you know, winning a provincial, getting back to the Scotties is, um, is on our, our hit list um, with the team I have now, uh, Kim Schneider, Carly Korczynski, they both been to a Scotties. Uh, Deb Lazinski, my lead hasn't. So for me, I'd love to to win and get get Deb to go to a national championship. It would be a, a dream come true for her, and it would just be great for the team. Um, we're past the point of trying to do Olympics and major events. It's you know, well, we're me for sure. Um, you know, Carly's a little younger on the team, and she's maybe still going to chase that dream at some point. But um, yeah, I think we're just we're just happy to stay competitive but realistic about the time that we can put into the sport um over and above busy lives family life those sort of things um you know a lot of those teams that we see on tv are, are chasing a different dream and really making curling a full-time thing and that's that's not who we are we we want to be able to balance both and uh so accomplishing that would be an accomplishment in itself because it's pretty tough to go out there and play against some of those teams that are making it a full-time gig well, Amber, uh, I so thoroughly enjoyed our time together. I appreciate it. Um, anything else you want to add in? No, not for, just thank you to everybody. I know a ton of people in the area and the community were watching the live stream and I was getting some texts and Facebook messages. So thank you for the support. It's great. Uh, and great to represent, um, you know, Harbor Golf Club where I work sponsors our team. So a little shout out to them, you know, for local pe people to, you know, be involved and, and help us support our dream financially along the way. So that's awesome. I'm, I appreciate the support from a new community because I haven't been here that long. Yeah. Well, we, we, we really take in successful people well. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> 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 well, thank you so much, Amber. I appreciate it. Um, have a great weekend, everybody. 19er shootout tonight. Don't forget to come down to the 
Tiener Dome there, everybody. Have a great weekend. Thanks, Rick.